Here are some fantastic Excel tips and tricks that will help you make your job in finance or accounting more efficient. These Excel tips and tricks are invaluable if you are in finance or accounting, but first I can use your help. My views and subscribers have dropped recently, and if you've enjoyed watching my videos, please take a moment right now and consider subscribing to boost my channel. Also, hit that thumbs up and share my videos if you believe they're helpful. I want to keep creating videos, and your help will make a huge difference. Now, let's get started. Create a total sheet. Something that's very common in Excel, especially for finance and accounting, is you might create a spreadsheet of data for a particular period of time, and then you just copy it over to multiple sheets when you change that period. So for example, here I have January data for the number of units sold by each of these sales reps. I've then copied that over to sheet two, changed it to February, and updated the units for that month, and did the same thing for March. Now we carry forward and we get to the end of the year and we want to create a total for the value of all the units summed up for all of those months. So there's a quick way to do this using 3D referencing and it works like this. I can click on any one of these sheets. I'm going to right click on it, choose move or copy, pick move to the end and I'm going to create a copy. This will become our total sheet. I'm going to right click on that to rename it and we'll call it total. Now I'm going to change the heading up here to total as well and we've got our total sheet created that's a duplicate from all the other ones. Now what we want is the units to be the total of all three of those sheets. So I'm going to type in a formula equals sum and I'm going to go back to sheet one and pick the units for the same cell C4. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select sheet one through sheet three and you can see up here in the formula it's now summing sheet one through sheet three, cell C4. When I hit the in parentheses and enter, on my total sheet, I now have the total number of units from those three months. I simply copy this down and I've got the totals from all of those. 3D referencing is as simple as selecting multiple sheets when you're creating your formulas. You can also do this with other things like inserting lines. So for example, let's say I want to insert a line here and put the year, but I want to do it on all the sheets. So first thing I'm going to do is click on sheet one with the shift key through the total sheet. So they're all selected. Now I come up here, right click and insert. I'm going to select these first three columns, merge and center them and put in 2021. Now when I click on these individual sheets, you can see it's added 2021 to all of them. The whole idea behind 3D references is that you can make changes to multiple sheets at the same time, and it's a great way to create total sheets. Trend line and forecast. Excel comes with a couple of great tools to help you find the trend of your data over time and also to forecast that data out into the future. And it works real simple off of a data table that you have in your spreadsheet. So for example, I have the sales history with the sales amount for each month over a period of several months. Just highlight any table that you have of that data, go to the Insert tab, and pick one of these charts. We'll just start with a line drawing. Now you can see the line of our graph showing the data with the x-axis for the months and the y-axis for the sales amount. If you right-click on that line, there's an option here to add a trend line. And you can see it defaults to a linear trend line and you can see that this line goes from point A to point B in a straight line, closely matching the data as well as it can. Now you can choose other types of options here, like polynomial, and that polynomial line is going to represent that data fairly closely. How close? Well, you can determine that by checking this box down here to display the R-squared value. This R-squared value represents a number between 0 and 1, and the closer it is to 1 tells you the more accuracy the trend line has to your data. Since this polynomial one matches really close, we get a very high R-squared value. But if we were to pick linear, you can see that it drops down to 0.84. So now that we have the polynomial selected as the trend line option that closely matches our line, we can also do some forecasting out into the future. So we'll come down here and we'll say, let's add six periods onto this chart. And of course the periods represent months because my data is broken down into monthly data amounts. 
And as you can see, the trend line, if it carries as this projection shows, it'll come out here close to 45,000 in six months. And of course, these projections are all based on the type of trend line you choose. So if we go back to linear, it's going to represent a much smaller number, assuming that this stays in a straight line. You can adjust these forecast periods out farther if you want to. And there's an option here that's kind of interesting where you can display the actual equation that's used to calculate those values. And so you could take this formula and you can enter the data elements for X and it'll calculate the value for Y just like it's doing to calculate this trend line. There are more complex things you can do with this trend line and forecasting, but at least this gives you a snapshot of what you can do in Excel with your data. Quick analysis tool. When you're working with a finance or accounting spreadsheet, you often deal with tables of data. And there's a great tool that Microsoft added to help you manage that data much more efficiently. Just highlight any table, and in the bottom right corner, you'll see the quick analysis tool. Click that and you have a menu with all kinds of options that you can apply to your table of data. You can set data bars representing the values in those cells or change the colors, green being high numbers, red being low numbers. You can do icons that represent your data values, set all the values greater than a certain amount in a certain color. You can also create charts and add them directly into your spreadsheet. One of the more common things is to put sums at the bottom of each of your columns. No need to go through the menus, you can just choose it right here from this option in the quick analysis menu. You can do averaging, counts, percent of totals, running totals, or do it for the rows as well. You can also do pivot tables of your data and pick from one of these pre-selected options. It'll insert it directly into your spreadsheet. And another cool feature is spark lines where you can represent your data as a little mini chart. The quick analysis tool is a great option if you want to automate some of those features that you commonly do to tables of data. Sum if and sum if s. These two functions are really helpful if you plan on summing up data based on specific criteria. So for example, if we want to do a sum if for this range of data values, the criteria we want is only when those values are greater than 23,000. And you have to put that in quotes. We'll do the in parentheses. And now you can see it sums up the value in this January column for only the values that are greater than 23,000. Sum if s works very similar, but it allows you to do multiple criteria and you can use criteria from another data set. So let's try a sum if s with this same range of values, but for the criteria range, we're gonna use the discount. And we only want to select those where the discount is greater than 45%, and those go into quotes as well. Now you can see it sums up the total of all these values where the discount is greater than 45%. Now we can do a sum if s with multiple criteria, so let's sum this range where the name equals Jim and for the second criteria we want the discount to be greater than 45 percent. And now it sums up only the ones where both of those criteria match. And as a side note you can substitute sum for count or average. So there is a average if and a count if, an average if s and a count if s, and they work the same way. Slicers. Another great tool when working with tables of data in your spreadsheet is to use slicers. Slicers allow you to filter data really easily from a menu. So let's just take this table of data, highlight the entire table, go to insert and create a table. We're gonna leave this checkbox here for the table has headers, hit okay, now that it's in a table format, we can go to insert and choose slicers from the menu. And you'll see it comes up with all the headings and we're gonna check the first three because those make sense as ways to filter that data in that table. Hit okay and it's created our three slicers. Now I'm gonna grab these and move them down here. And just to make it look clean, I'm going to click all three of these with the control key, change the alignment for the slicer to align the top, and then distribute them horizontally. Now we've got a nice clean menu to select from. 
The way slicers work, I can just select one of these names from this slicer and it filters the data in the list based on that selection. I can clear it by hitting this button in the upper right corner and I can select the same thing from other slicers or I can do a combination from multiple slicers and now it shows just Sally with 45% discount. The other thing you can do is you can select a name, hold the control key down, select another one, and it filters out both of those selections. You can do that in any one of these categories. If you want to filter your data with a nice clean menu, slicers is the solution. Date functions. Excel provides a number of functions that help you work with dates in your spreadsheet. So let's start by putting in a date of 3-5-2021. You'll notice that it's entered as a date number, so the formatting needs to be changed to make it look like a normal date. Right click on that, go to Format Cells, choose Date from the category, and then you can choose from a variety of different date formats. I'll leave it the top one, hit OK, and now we have a normal looking date. There's also a function called Today, which returns the current date. Be aware this is a dynamic date, and it will update every time you open the spreadsheet. There's also a function called end of month. So if we want to find the end of month for this start date, zero months out, that gives us 331-2021. You can put in here a number like one, which will show us next month's end of the month date. And you can even put a negative number in here to go backwards a month. If you want to add or subtract a number of months from a date, use this edate function. Put in the start date and the number of months and it returns the date in advance that many months. You can also use negative numbers in here to go backwards that many months. Use the days function to calculate the number of days between an end date and a start date and it tells us there's 222 days. Network days work similar. You put in a start date and an end date, but it returns a lower number because it excludes all the weekends. This gives you the number of business working days. You can also add the optional parameter here to specify a list of holidays and it will exclude those from that calculation as well. To do the reverse, use workday, put in a start date and the number of days and it calculates from that start date. You can add the same parameter here and designate your holidays to exclude those dates as well. If you want to know the day of the week, use the weekday function. That tells us which day of the week that date falls on, with one being Sunday, seven being Saturday, so in this case it's Friday. And if you want to know which week number of the year, use this function calculate how many weeks into the year that number provides. And that is the 10th week of 2021. All of these functions help you work with dates in your spreadsheet, but you can also come up here and click FX, and then select date and time from this category, and you'll see all kinds of different functions related to dates. Subtotals. Excel has a quick method to create a subtotal report of data that you have in a table in your spreadsheet. The only criteria is that you make sure you put the groups together that you plan to break down into the subtotal report. When that's ready, just go up to Data, click on Subtotal, and you have some options here. Since we're going to do the subtotal for each month, that's the category we're going to select for this first option, and we're going to sum the amounts in those subtotals. But you can do the count, average, max, min, or product and we're going to do the subtotal using the amount column. You have options down here to replace the current subtotal if you're making changes to it. You can put page breaks between those groups and you can have a summary at the bottom of your list. Hit OK and it creates your subtotal. You can see here we have a January total and the formula that's being used is the subtotal of the data above it. If you come down to the bottom you'll see you have a grand total and over to the left, you can see the groups can be collapsed and expanded based on how you want to view the data. You can also select the entire group up here if we want to see just the first subtotal grouping. That's going to be the grand total. The second one is going to be the months. 
and the third one is going to be all of them expanded out. If you want to turn off the subtotaling, just go back to the same location and click remove all. Subtotals is a great method to use to get this information very quickly. Filter. Another great tool that helps you pull data from tables in your spreadsheet is one of the new dynamic array formulas called Filter. It's available in newer versions of Excel. If we type in equals filter, it wants to know what array. Well, we'll select this entire data set and we'll include just the data where the region equals the region we've entered up here in parentheses. And as you can see, it fills in and spills all the data over on a multiple rows for every one where the region is east. I can then change this to some other region and it updates that data. Now you'll notice that the filter is really shaded out on all these other rows because the formula is really only contained in the upper left corner. So it's spilling over multiple lines from one formula. Now I can edit this formula and change just this section for the include to where the rep equals this rep right here. And now it spills the data over for rep Tim. Now you might think there's a way we can do both, and there is. So let's go up to this formula. We're going to edit this, and this time we're going to put in here a left bracket, and we're going to do the region equals north, and then we're going to multiply that by the parentheses for the rep equaling this rep right here. And do the in parentheses, and hit enter. And now you have the combination where the region and the rep both match in this formula. So now I can change the rep to Sally. And it only finds one where the rep is Sally and the region is north. And then we can change this to a different region. And it finds two. If you want to see other dynamic array formulas, make sure to check out that video. And I'll put a link at the end of this video. Drop down list. Anytime you're choosing data from a table, it's a good idea to use a drop-down list so it makes them easier to select. But before we do that, let's find the unique values for region and rep. Up here, I'm going to use a dynamic array formula called unique. And we're going to select the region, and that returns unique values in that list. Now we'll do the same thing for the rep, and it returns the unique rep values. Now we're going to go over to our region and make this a selectable drop-down list of just these regions. To do that, go up to Data and select this option right here for Data Validation. We're going to select a list and the source is going to be these values. Hit OK and now I have a drop-down list of just those four options. We'll do the same thing over here for the rep make it a list and for the source we're going to use these options. Now I can go in here and change these and it updates the values in our filter based on our drop-down list. PMT. A commonly used financial calculation is the PMT function. It helps you calculate the payment for a loan over a number of periods at a specific interest rate. We'll enter an annual rate here of 4.5% as a fraction. And I'm going to just right click and format that cell as a percentage. Hit OK. There's our 4.5%. The number of payments will make 60 and the loan amount is going to be 40,000. Now for the PMT function, we're going to enter PMT, the rate. And the key here is since it's a 60 month payment for $40,000, we're going to divide this annual rate by 12. The number of periods is 60. And the present value of the loan is going to be 40,000. Hit enter and it calculates that payment as 745.72. Now if you don't like the negative, you can put in a minus to reverse that to a positive number. The PMT function also has optional parameters here to specify the future value and a type of when the payment is due, whether it's at the end of the period or at the beginning of the period. So you have some options available there.
Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.